Hello and welcome to Unleashed, the show that explores how to thrive as an independent professional. In today's episode, I'm very pleased to welcome my two Umbrex co-founders, Margarita Soto and Jing Lang. And what we're going to be talking about is the efforts that they've been leading to support orphans in Ukraine. Um, I want to start with Jing. Jing, I know that on a trip to Ukraine in 2017, you uh, got to know uh, an orphanage, got introduced to an orf a foster orphan family, I should say, not an orphanage, and saw that they were in need. You began supporting that uh, family. You've been supporting them ever since. Um, well before this war started, you, you actually moved to Ukraine. We're living there. January of 2022, before this war started, paint us a picture. Help us understand what's the situation of orphans in Ukraine. I understand that the government kind of deinstitutionalized to some degree, moved orphans out of orphanages into family. Tell us a little bit about the situation of orphans in Ukraine. Sure. So maybe I'll just give a very brief a background in, in terms of the, the orphan foster uh, family system in Ukraine and also the NGO I started called Sunflower Academy. Um, so Ukraine started deinstitutionalizing their uh, orphanages. Um, they would basically send these kids to live with a foster uh, family. Um, and they range anywhere from four to 10 uh, orphans uh, per family. And there may be one or two, uh, you know, kids uh, that the, the who are actual biological children of uh, the orphan, uh, the, the foster parents. I had started sponsoring one of these families in 2017, and I, what I was doing was I really want to change their life trajectories with these kids. So I was paying for monthly English tutors, private tutors for all the kids, monthly English, uh, math tutors. I bought them all laptops, uh, you know, use Lenovo, um, all smartphones. So they have basically a head start um, in life. Uh, I had moved to Kiev um, in 2020, basically right when the lockdown, the first lockdown ended um, in New York. And I, 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 I was wanted to go to Kiev to build my data cleaning startup. Uh, I started sponsoring a second family, um, also, you know, buying them used laptops, et cetera. When the war started, and I, I left Kiev one week before the actual invasion, I, I went to Amsterdam because the U.S. Embassy kept emailing us every single day to tell us to get out. And when the war started, I, I was completely shocked. And I... I kept. I wanted. I made sure that the families I was supporting were safe, and and they were um, with some kind of other kind of help from other NGOs. Uh, the families that I was supporting ended up, um, you know, in Spain, um, one and the other one in Italy. But that at that point, I also wanted to see whether um, you know there are many other foster families like this, orphan foster families like this uh, throughout Ukraine. So. Me and, and the general manager that I hired to kind of run this NGO uh, started to reaching out to other uh, families to see what help they need because they were fleeing war. They were fleeing, you know, from from the heaviest parts uh, where there were heaviest heavy fighting. Um, initially, we were just doing, you know, small kind of, uh, you know, funds, my own funds and also, you know, from you know, close friends who are donating. Um, to support emergency needs for me food, medicine, uh, clothing, et cetera. But then, you know, we now have so many more families and, and Margarita, you know, uh, stepped in to help expand our effort. And, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Margarita and, and, and see uh, and let her talk about you know, where we are right now. Margarita. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for having us. Um, thanks, Jen, Jing, for that intro. Um, so Umbrex already has a commitment to uh, pro bono work. Um, I like to think of us building out each individual consultant's ability to have their own corporate social responsibility arm of their business via the Umbrex community. Um, and, you know, we were able to roll up our sleeves and help during the pandemic. We've been able to help with lots of nonprofits and NGOs who come to us for help. Um, and of course, when the war broke out, I was again, just um, really inspired by the community just meeting right away and trying to think how they could help. And we identified several initiatives, including Jing's initiative to support these foster families. We learned there at that point that 
many families um, that are stuck, right? If you have a family with five to 10 children, um, you can imagine the cost of relocating. Um, you can imagine the burden of just the logistics, let alone the expense, let alone the trauma. Um, when you're dealing with foster care children, there's a history and many of them have special needs. Um, and my personal story, as you know, Will, uh, my parents adopted a foster child when uh, actually, you know, when I was uh, older um, and I also worked um, with, uh, with the foster care system in, in, um, in the United States with uh, Child Protective Services um, early in my career. So when the war broke out, I immediately thought of vulnerable families and what it means for a vulnerable family to leave. Um, and I knew that the logistics of that, you know, just uh, overwhelming. So we stepped in and uh, the generosity of the Umbrex community, the donations came in and we were able to raise $25,000 um, to help over 60 families um, with one-time emergency funds. And, um, and that really about four to $500 a month helps a large family like this for as much as you can imagine, probably a month. Um, of course, the crisis continues and the needs are great. And every day we get approached by new families. Can you, can you um, say for a minute, how did you, Margarita, go from you know the two families Jing was supporting to 60 families? How did you identify them, vet sure. them, and so forth? I think that you hired a you know someone on yeah. the ground in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um in our in our aim to help, we also wanted to do no harm, right? Um, and understanding that, you know, there's limited kind of capacity with our own team and with our understanding of you know Ukraine. We hired, we hired a Ukrainian um herself who also had had to leave Ukraine because of the war. Um, and so she um, did outreach and worked with the two families that we knew and worked with their network and went and we found uh, social media groups where they were supporting each other. And she has made an effort to connect with each one of the families and vet them. So she vets them by checking, uh, they get special documents from Ukraine to verify that in fact, they are, you know, foster uh, foster families supporting these um, or orphans. So she verifies that paperwork. She verifies the identity of the children and the identity of the people of the parents. She does video calls with them. So there's a vetting process to make sure that we actually have identified a family that they're actually, you know, in the crises that they're claiming to be in. Um, so once she does that vetting, she writes up a bio, lets us know kind of what their situation is, and then we kind of prioritize them based on need. Um, so that's how we went from two to 60 um, over the course of uh, these, these weeks. Um, and we have been able to fundraise really through the generosity of the Umbrex community and Veritax community of which I'm in incredibly grateful. Um, however, the need continues. And so we realized that we really got, need to go beyond our network and we really need to be much more public with it. Um, so I reached out to a dear friend who had a very, uh, amazing fundraising camp, uh, GoFundMe campaign uh, during the separation of children's and families in, in the former administration. Um, and, she, uh, and she talked about her partnership with GoFundMe and how amazing they have been. So um, apparently GoFundMe has a nonprofit um, arm of, of GoFundMe and um, that supports um, some projects as a fiscal sponsor. So when you, so, the NGO is a Ukrainian-based NGO. It's not an American NGO, which is under 5013 protection. Um, and so we were also not able to tell people that it was a tax-deductible donation. Um, so we reached out to GoFundMe and they have generally, generously allowed um, our project as part of the few projects that they are supporting. Um, so they will be our fiscal sponsor. And, um, and we are launching our GoFundMe campaign. Actually, we're gonna be launching it tomorrow. Um, and, uh, so, um, uh, and just for the date tomorrow, Wednesday, May 25th, um, uh, where it will be a tax deductible donation for, um, uh, the, a U.S. Um, nonprofit that will be supporting our, our efforts to continue to fundraise for these families. So just, Since, a, so just a question about GoFundMe. So this is kind of a, perhaps a silly question, but normally like someone sets up a GoFundMe, they say, oh, you know, I, I had this accident, I need to raise funds to go to the hospital or something like that. That money is not tax deductible, right? It's the same as just giving money to a friend, like giving them cash. But That's correct. when you get sponsored by the GoFundMe nonprofit group, 
now that money that people give to, um, to you know, to the uh, orphans Ukraine, that would actually be number one, be tax deductible for U.S. taxpayers, right? And what's the other advantages in terms of oversight and giving people confidence that the money is being you know used appropriately or tell us a little bit about the oversight sure. aspects of being a nonprofit. Well, it's ups our efforts to having to have the standards of a nonprofit. So we have an accountability to GoFundMe in terms of how we're utilizing our funds and um and making sure that we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's, which we, you know, have been doing anyway. So we appreciate the oversight um and the professionalism. Um, so, uh, our general I can manager, add, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Frank, I, I can add a little more, right? So, so, so we, we do have an accountant. So I set up this as a Ukrainian NGO. So, and there are requirements for that too. So we have an accountant that keeps track of all the money in and all the money going out. Um, and, and GoFundMe requires a, uh, a, a report of how funds are spent. Um, the other important thing I want to uh, point out is that, any donations we take in, they go directly to the families, 100% of it. Um, you know, some sometimes, you know, the banks uh, from transfer might take out like, you know, 0.5%, 1%. But all the money that our donors have donated uh, goes 100% to these families. Um, Umbrex pays uh, for uh, for one staff that's helping with the NGO. And I pay for the, for the general manager that's running the NGO in Ukraine. So... You know, we do not use donors' funds to uh, as overhead for our NGO. So I, I think that's actually really important because I think a lot of charities out there, and and I would say some of the very big charities, you know, a lot of the money they donate they end up going to you know expensive overhead. Oh, really and nice. not 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 only that, I, I want to also point out that the the other benefit is that you know the time when we receive a donation to the time the family receives the money, okay? It's literally the same day. It could be a few hours afterwards. It just, you know, Ukraine actually has a very efficient electronic payment system. Um, and once we receive the funds, we already have, uh, I think now, I think over 35 families in waiting uh, for, for like these emergency need. Once we receive it, we send it out right then and there. Um, Whereas I think some of the large charities, because they're so large and, and there's a, a, quite a bit of kind of bureaucracy, you know, the money that's received by them may not be spent until, you know, months later, um, you know, and going through multiple layers. So I think that those are really important differentiations for people considering donating to, you know, Sunflower Academy uh, versus other large uh, charities that's raising money for, for Ukraine. I, of course, I mean, I think, you know, it's good for, for people to donate uh, to Ukraine, any charity that's, you know, helping Ukraine. But um, I just want to point out some of the differences and in, in terms of uh, between Sunfire Academy and, and some of the other kind of charity uh, efforts going on. Yeah, that's, that's great. And that's, um, you know, I think a lot of economists talk about how direct giving can be you know, very powerful. It's a little bit like UBI, you know, that, that whole discussion. Margarita, tell us a little bit about what um, the organization's been doing to get the word out and tell the individual stories of some of the people that's been helped. I know that there's an Instagram account. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing to get the word out and sure. share their stories. Sure. So we went and hired another Ukrainian because again, we're, you know, we're supporting um, Ukrainian freelancers. Um, a social media expert to have us uh, create our social media presence. So we now have a Facebook page as well as an Instagram page. Um, Jane, can you show that link? Uh, or uh, we'll do it at the end of the call. Um, so we, and in those pages, we're sharing their stories. So as you know, we have, when we're vetting the families, we're collecting their stories, we have their bios. So we're able to share pictures and videos of these families and collect their stories. Um, and they're powerful. You know, we're talking about families who had normal, you know, their, their normal lives, which was already, a, you know, a struggle, right? Um, and was already trauma, you know, filled with so much trauma, right? Um, and now there, some families have lost their homes, some families have had to leave, some families are still in their homes, and they're just kind of scared and, you know, hearing bombing happening. So the, their stories vary. Um and our goal is to share those stories and talk about kind of, and center, you know, this work on them because it is about them and we want to support them and help them. Um, and, uh, and any little bit that folks can, can help, 
um, you know, we'll be going directly to them and, and we're excited by the partnership with, with Sunflower Academy and with all the, and with many members in the community of Umbrex who have rolled up their sleeves and helped also. Fantastic. So um, they, there's a, for US taxpayers, um, there's the GoFundMe now, and we will include that link in the show notes. And I think that there's also another payment gateway that I, that I, I tested it out it, uh, for, you know, that works globally, but also particularly for, for Europeans. What's that, what's that other one? Yeah, so that one is actually a direct credit card donation portal uh, that goes directly to the NGO's uh, bank account in Ukraine. It's a fond. It's a fondy. Uh, it's, it's basically fondy is a payment processor based in Europe, and they happen to work with Ukraine. Uh, a lot of U.S. processors uh, don't work with U- Ukraine, um, and and in fact, I think you know some people have experienced difficulties paying by credit card, donating by credit card through fondy, is because anytime a credit card uh, shows a transaction to Ukraine, uh, which uh, most Americans do not you know, buy anything or donate anything to Ukraine before the war, it trips up a algorithm. So if this happens, please, uh, you know, work with your uh, credit card company to tell them that, you know, this is not fraud. Or just use the GoFundMe, right? Yes, we can go to GoFundMe. I I think the other thing that I I do want to kind of point out is that the the families we're trying to help right now, they're in dire need. Um, And we have families uh, who are literally in person uh, which is being occupied by Russian uh, uh, troops, Russian armies. And typically their government, the Ukrainian government, sends out uh, monthly stipends for these kids. But obviously, you know, you know, it's not working very well right now. And also the money actually uh, goes out from the local administration. And imagine, you know, a city being kind of bombed. The local administration is not working very well. So a lot of these families, that, especially the, you know, they're dependent on this money coming from the government to support um, these kids. Now, basically, are spending all their money uh, out of their savings, which they don't have much to begin with. Not only that, the prices of food, as you imagine, has increased a lot. Um, so it is very, very dire situation. And we have families identified for people to help immediately. And, and I think I do want to also mention one thing, right? Despite everything, you know, a lot of these families still have access to internet connection. They still have access to electricity. So some of our donors have connected individually uh, with uh, Zoom calls with individual families. And to them, that's been a a really, really kind of a valuable personal connection, just like that made a huge impression on me. So I think if any donors uh, would like to actually sponsor a family, um, we would be happy to connect you with one. We would set up a call. We will provide translators uh, for your call. So you can learn uh, directly from them, you know, what they're facing, what are the challenges they're facing. And, and, and also, I think, you know, I, I guarantee I'm, I am a much happier person uh, since supporting orphan foster families. Um, you know, I think of all the money that we make, we need to find ways to spend it that increase our happiness. And, and I think this has been one of the highest uh, return investment, um, you know, spending that I've, I've ever had in my life. So I encourage uh, donors, please donate. Every single dollar helps. But I also encourage those donors um, that have the ability to sponsor a family and and connect with them so that you can help them ride out this war. So I think I understood. So Margarita, go ahead. Yeah, and the other thing is, of course, share. I think we all have communities and networks we're part of that are generous and as generous as Umbrex and Veritox have been. Um, so I encourage you to share, to share in all of your um, different spaces you inhabit and uh, so that we can get the word out about um, some of Ukrainians' most vulnerable families. All right. Well, thank you to both of you for the work that you've been doing to lead this effort. And also thank you to the numerous uh, members of Umbrex and Veritux that have contributed uh, to this effort as you know, both their time and their funds. I uh, will include that link for the GoFundMe in the show notes. So please share that and consider making a contribution. Um, you know, fifteen or twenty dollars can feed a family for a day. Uh, Four hundred dollars could feed a family for a month. Um, so thanks for your contributions and thanks for listening.